Hello again, friends. Welcome back. My name is Oscar Montesiga. I'm a certified wine and spirits instructor from the International Wine and Spirits Guild. And thanks for joining me here at Uncourt Vintage Academia. We're at the Booze Library to serve you a pretty classic cocktail. We have a traditional cocktail stemming from the 1900s. And today we're going to make you an aviation cocktail. So the aviation cocktail has a story that begins in New York. And again, by the early 1900s, uh, Hugo Ensling is reported to have the, uh, created the cocktail in New York, I believe at a hotel called The Wallach, or The Wallach Hotel. And uh, we have a recipe as early as the 1916, uh, in the early 1900s. I think by the 1930s, uh, the, Savoy, uh, the Savoy Hotel published the cocktail as part of the repertoire of recipes that they published. Um, it's a pretty bad, uh, you know, simple cocktail in that it has simple ingredients, but they may be sometimes hard to get depending on your market. So the principal spirit for the cocktail of the aviation is a gin, typically a London dry gin or any dry style gin will work. And then you have a maraschino liqueur and the most common or rather the most famous maraschino liqueur is the luxardo liqueur so you have a cherry based liqueur that's very alpine very herbaceous very pretty maybe hard to get in certain markets and the recipe also calls for uh, creme de violette uh, basically a violet style liqueur a violet, uh, violet flavor liqueur in the old school days and this is back in the 1900s the proprietary violet liqueur was called creme de vet. Uh, however, creme de vet uh, stopped being produced in 1969 and it was a period of about 40 years that creme de vet did not exist. So if you look at all the recipes, um, you may find a, a creme de vet reference because it was the violet liqueur, liqueur to go to, right? Like, you know, Grand Marnier is kind of like the cognac orange based liqueur to go to. Um, so, however, you know, the brand restarted in 2009. So today you can find Creme de Vet if you want the traditional um, proprietary name, or you can find a somewhat generic uh, violet liqueur or a Creme de Liqueur, uh, sorry, a Creme de, Creme de Violette. Some people call it Creme de Violet. Creme de Violet is um, what it typically sounds like, but you can go either way and we'll also need lemon juice but those are the four base ingredients three spirits or um, you know alcoholic ingredients and then some fresh lemon juice so we're gonna serve serve this straight and up uh, make sure your your coop your coup is chilled whether you're taking it out of the freezer or a chiller or if you're chilling it before service with just ice and water this is a shaking cocktail so on the top of my shaker I'm gonna include I'm going to include one and a half ounces of, of gin. Today I'm using Hendrix gin. Um, one and a half ounces is all you need. You need a London style um, gin. And I already poured that into my shaker and into the shaker head one and a half ounce. Next, really you only need about uh, one fourth of an ounce of creme de violette one-fourth of an ounce you know if you wanted to give it more more color and more sweetness and more violet flavor you can go up to one and a half ounce but one-fourth of an ounce is really all you all it takes of creme de violet and then the maraschino liqueur from luxardo we're gonna use half an ounce half an ounce everything being combined in the top of the shaker Lastly, I also need one half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Before I juice my lemon, I'm gonna take my peeler. I'm gonna take uh, some lemon zest to use. I'm gonna cut that lemon in half. And I'm guessing that half a lemon is gonna give me about half an ounce. Let's see. Actually, it will give me more than that that I need. So really all you need is half a lemon and use half an ounce of lemon juice. So 
So that's it. I have one and a half gin, one fourth violet, one half maraschino, and one half ounce lemon juice. I'm gonna combine with, with ice into my shaker and shake to wake it up, not to put it to sleep. a nice white film kind of forming it's telling me the cocktail is cold enough in the chill cool I'm gonna dump the ice and water and this is where my express oil came into being meaning I'm gonna use just the zest of the half lemon that I peeled uh, just to give more flavor to the taster my guest when they approach the cocktail for the first time, gives you a little bit more aromatics. All right. You strain, straighten up. And so this has a pretty you know, pretty light violet lavender hue. Again, if you choose to give it more color or um, more sweetness and more violet flavor, you will have to use with one, um, one half ounce of the creme de violet. And lastly, the garnish for the aviation is maraschino cherries. So find a good quality marasca cherry um, preserve. Um, you can use one or three. The proprietary brand name that most people will recognize is the Luxardo Maraschino cherries that are just these beautiful uh, black marasca cherries um, preserved in their own syrup, basically. And they're very rich, very sweet, very, very, very flavorful to any cocktail. And you need a cherry flag to garnish. So. There you have it, folks, the aviation cocktail. And it's a very subtle drink. It's very light and refreshing. It's mem mesmerizing how subtle it is. There's not really a super strong flavor in, of anything that you can really pinpoint or point out because you have three highly aromatic uh, uh, spirits, including the gin that has a juniper base, depending of course on your gin, how much flavor that's gonna give it. You could have gins that are more juniper forward than Hendrix is, that has a little bit of floral influence as well as the cucumber base. Uh, but you have very, very aromatic profile on the spirit as a gin in general. And then the Luxardo, which is also a, a maraschino, um, the, um, the maraschino liqueur, it's very botanical as well. There's a lot of like mountain alpine herbs. And then the pretty floral notes from the creme de violette that I don't think you can pinpoint what's in this cocktail necessarily uh, because it is refreshing. It's floral, herbaceous, not necessarily fruity. Um, so all, everything is combined to make it really subtle and very refreshing. It's a great aperitif cocktail. I would enjoy that anytime before a meal. Uh, but it could also go with a few dishes, uh, whether you're thinking like some springtime or even fall seasonal salads. Um, I think you can play around with some pairing ideas with this cocktail because it doesn't have a strong flavor. It's not a weak um, uh, cocktail by any means, but it's got a very unique identity that it's hard to really point out what it is other than it being pretty, um, pretty to look at and 
pretty to drink. I mean, it's just um, a subtle yet complex cocktail. So I hope you give it a chance. If you've never had an aviation before, it may sound scary because it may have ingredients that you may not recognize um, readily or easily. Uh, but I think it's really worth a shot for even inexperienced drinkers that may, you know, maybe borderline, um, you know, thinking whether they should get a cocktail or stick to something they know, like just, sim you know, a simple beer or a simple margarita, anything like that. Um, if you want to color outside the lines, try the aviation next. I think you're going to be very pleased because it's subtle, pretty complex and, um, shouldn't shouldn't uh, intimidate you so i hope you enjoyed the video hit subscribe if you haven't so you stay tuned for our next cocktail or the next spirit evaluation thank you for watching i am glad i had you with me and cheers <laughs>